Welcome back Interior Alaska, Joe Cook here with your local Wednesday sports. We've been enjoying a pretty mild winter and despite that cold snap a couple weeks back, it's been nice, but this weather has been a hindrance for multiple marquee mushing events. The Iditarod restart will be on Monday on March 9th, but it may move from the Chena River in front of Pike's Landing to an overland trail that will connect to the Tanana River. Currently, there's plenty of open water floating and thin ice in the area. The hope is that things will cool down before March 9th. Hopefully they will. The GCI Open North American Championship scheduled for March 20th have moved their start to the Jeff Studdard race grounds instead of the traditional downtown Fairbank start because of lack of snow. The limited North American scheduled a week earlier will also start at the Jeff Studdard race grounds. Recently, the Ferrandi was canceled because of lack of snow and poor trail conditions and anchorage in the south central area of Alaska, but there will be a dedication ceremony for the late great George Atlas this Saturday at noon at 4th Avenue and D Street in Anchorage. And during our broadcast last night, the first Iron Dog team made it into Nome. Team 20 of Scott Fayo and Eric Quam checked into Nome at 621 on Tuesday. The duo gets $10,000 for being the first to the halfway point. Aaron Bartell and Scott Davis came in 17 minutes later for second. Close race here early this morning. Some local teams came into Nome. Tyler Huntington and Todd Palin just before 1 a.m. They are in 10th place. Place. Fairbanks is Chris Carroll and Ray Shafasis are 15th, while the Fairbanks team of Ryan Falsam and Tony Green are 17th. Seven teams have scratched, including Sonny and York Linder of Fairbanks, and the only female team of Rachel Kidwell and Ashley Wood. Even for the leaders, it's been a pretty rough race. We spent 40 minutes sitting there screwing with that other kid's sled than ours, so I don't know, basically just keeping it clean. I think there's going to be there's going to be carnage on the way back, definitely. Make sure he could move everything and. Make sure if we needed a, you know, are we calling a helicopter or are we putting the sled back together? So, and of course, Scott's a pretty competitive guy. He said, leave me the, leave me the hell alone and <laughs> grab my sled. We just slowed down a little bit trying to take care of our iron. We got to get this stuff that's got another thousand to go and, and we got to make sure it's going to get there. And today, five Nanooks qualified for the NCAA Division II Swimming and Diving Championships. Senior Margot Adams, sophomores Nye Wynn and Victoria Adams, and freshman Martha Hood and Katie Stark. Margot Adams will be in the 100 Butterfly, and she'll be on the 200 and 400 Medley Relay teams. Victoria Adams and Wynn are in both relays. Stark will sim swim in the 400 Medley Relay, and Hood in the 200 Medley Relay. National start March 11th in Indianapolis. And despite a flight delay, six ice dogs made an impact at the NCAA Prospect Showcase in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Tuesday, the Midwest Division team, they won 5-3 over the North Division squad. Johnny Mueller had three assists, and Lonnie Clare, he added two helpers as well. Yannick Fidel, he scored an empty netter, and Hans Grossi, he also had an assist in the win. Chandler Madri, he assisted on the game-tying goal and converted his first shootout attempt for the NHL Selects team, and their 3-2 shootout win over the U-17 Team USA squad. The Ice Dogs will face the Johnstown Tomahawks at, at the Dipper this weekend. Now we have a high school basketball recap from Tuesday night. Check it out. We start at Lathrop High School for a non-conference doubleheader. The Lathrop girls were ahead 17-14 at the half, but used a 7-0 run to start the third, which was key. Monroe's Andy Clark led the Rams for 14 points. They hung around the second half, but Lathrop just a little bit too much as they go on to win 53-39. Cheyenne Diver scored a game-high 15 points for Lathrop in the win. In the boys' game, this looked to be the game of the night, but it didn't turn out that way. It was an 11-11 game with 2-0-2 in the first quarter, but Lathrop was held scoreless for 20 minutes in real time as the Rams went on a 17-0 run. Jalen McCullough had a game-high 22 points for the Rams, who win 70 to 40 over Lathrop. Over at Hutchinson High School, an emotional senior night. Nine seniors were honored before a doubleheader against the Allison Ravens. Five seniors on the girls' team and four on the boys' team. There were tears as former boys basketball coach Marcy Williamson surprised the seniors before tip-off. In the girls' contest, Hutch handled business, leading 16-6 at the end of the first, and that lead would increase from there, forcing turnovers with their press and scoring. Senior Ashley Stark scored 16 points, and fellow senior Katie Peterson scored a game-high 18 in a 73-35 win over the Ravens. We feel pretty good. We feel like we can do pretty good in regionals, and that we can accomplish what we want to. The boys' game would be a lot closer. Allison acting as spoilers on Hutchison's senior night. They led 27-21 at the end of a high-scoring first quarter. Dylan Scarborough had a monster. 28 point game for the Ravens, but Hutchison held the Ravens to seven points in the second quarter. Mike Benson, a senior, led five other Hawks in double figures with 20 points. Hutchison wins on senior night, holding off the upstart Ravens in a 85 77 win. The Hawks get the award conference sweep. 
And that'll do it for sports tonight. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time.